Hello, you Pike viewers. Welcome to the March edition of Bear TV News. I'm Trey Hutchinson. And I'm Bradley Loader. We're here to cover some of the most recent news around you Pike and the surrounding community. In today's show, we will be featuring stories on the latest Jenny Wiley play, an upcoming film festival, the football team spring practice, and the record snowfall that shut down U Pike for seven days. But for our first story of the day, Lauren Gregory brings us an update on the U Pike men's and women's bowling team as they compete for a national championship. For the first time in four years, the UPAC men's and women's bowling teams will be advancing to the national tournament. This is the first year that this program has been going in four years, mm -hmm. so the pressure is going to be on for us, and I think we're going to be able to handle it the right way. Although this is the first trip in four years for the men, the women's team has consecutively competed on the national level. Well, we've been real fortunate with, with, uh, with that, and our third year as a program, 2004, we won our first national tournament, then in 2008, we, we won the, another one. 2012, we won the NAIA national tournament, and you know we're hoping to be able to break the four-year cycle and get one in three years here this year. Being familiar with the level of competition, the women's team is anxious to compete for another national title. No, it's really exciting because the last two years we've been runner-up. We've made the TV pair, which is like, you know, really hard to do back-to-back -back years. And now this year we're like, we're, we have got the fire in our stomachs. We are trying to bring home that ring. You can keep close tabs on the bowling teams through a live stream on bowl.com. This is Lauren Gregory reporting for Bear TV News. And as always, go Bears! Great job, Lauren. We appreciate the coverage and wish both teams the best of luck as they compete. For our next segment, we will send it over to Adrian Smith, where he had a chance to report an upcoming production of Still Magnolias at Jenny Wiley Theater. With the conclusion of their previous show, the staff of Jenny Wiley Theater are preparing for their next performance. This is Still Magnolias, and a lot of people know the movie, but, they, and, but very few people know that it was a play first. And quite frankly, I do think it is one of the classic American plays. Personally, I think that the play is much, much better than the movie. It's a play about Southern women, but really it's a play about all women. It's, it takes place in a beauty shop, in a, in a converted carport. These women have strong ties to each other. They take care of each other. They're thick and thin. And it's just about the relationships, the bonds that form between women or, or even all people when they're in a community uh -huh. that's close and they see each other and care for each other and are interested in each other's uh -huh. lives. You can see Still Magnolia here at the Jenny Wiley Theater in Pikeville starting March 26th through April 14th. All students are encouraged to come off the hill and see the show. It's a great play for everybody. I mean this is one you can bring the whole family to. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you'll have a great time. You'll get to run the whole, whole gamut of emotions. Still Magnolia isn't the only play you should see. Kim Willard is also working on the University of Pikeville's performance of the 12 Angry Men. That we will be performing 12 Angry Men on May 6th, 8th, and 9th at 7 p.m. in Christman Auditorium, and that will be performed by the Fundamentals of Acting class. We hope everybody on campus will come and see it. Students will be able to see Still Magnolia at a discount price starting March 26th at the Jenny Wiley Theater in Pikeville, while admission is free for 12 Angry Men starting May 6th. Adrian Smith. Bear TV News. You stay classy, Pikeville. Thanks, Adrian. Hopefully the U Pike students will come and support the play. I'm sure it'll make a great date night. Now we turn it over to our reporter, Christian Wright, for a story on an upcoming film festival hosted by the U Pike Film and Media Arts Program. Many filmmakers in the Appalachian region have gone without a venue to air their work for many years. That changes this semester with the announcement of U Pike Film and Arts Festival. I spoke with festival organizers David Chapman and Aaron Asbury about how the event came to be. We were thinking about how there are no festivals around here to showcase local talent, and we realized we wanted to do that, so we had to make our own. There's no restriction on length exactly. We are accepting feature length films, but as we have not much time, fewer will be accepted. Anyone from middle school to professional can submit any film. The deadline for submissions is April 15th, the notification date is the 25th, and of course the film festival is on May 1st and 2nd. I also had a chance to sit down with U Pike Assistant FMA Professor Andrew Reed about his insight on the festival. 
Right now, festival preparation is going pretty well. We're trying to reach out to UPike students and to high schools and middle schools in the area to let them know about the festival. Uh, we're hoping to get in some entries from college students and professionals as well, but we're really trying to push localism and we would love to have a lot of people attend the festival. So that's why we're really trying to reach out to these middle schools and high schools. We would really just encourage as many people as possible to submit and come out and have a great time. Newpike FMA Fest is May 1st and 2nd. To submit your work, go to fmafest.org. From the Holler Studio, I'm Christian Wright, Bear TV. Thanks for the coverage, Christian. I know I'm planning on entering a project myself. Looks like it will be a really fun event for everyone in town. We'll send it over to Octavian Crusher for his report on the first football practice. This past Monday, March 23rd, the University of Pikeville started the spring practice. The Birds is looking to rebound after finishing 5-6 and six last fall. The coach is looking to field positions after losing a handful of seniors due to graduation last season. These practices will help the coaches gauge where the talent level is for the returning players and new transfers that came during the spring. I was able to get an interview with head coach Alan Holland and his expectations on what's coming for the spring. Uh, you know, the big thing is we're really pressing on the fundamentals and the guys getting better at the little things in, in the game of football. And that's one big thing that we've really preached through the off-season workout, uh, you know, trust the process. And that's sort of what we put as our motto on the back of our shirts. And these guys buying in and doing what we ask them to do and not playing outside of the system offensively, defensively, and special team-wise and playing together as one unit. And if we feel like if we can get to that point and everybody's, you know, got one heartbeat, then we're going to have a great football team. Uh, how are you prepared to fill positions of spots covered by last year's seniors? You know, we had 21 seniors last year. That's tough. That's a real tough role to fill. And a lot of great experience, you know, in, in the big spot where we really got to fill is that linebacker. Uh, you know, graduating five guys there at, at linebacker, and that makes it tough for you. But, you know, you got a lot of young guys. You got some guys that red shirted. The coaches and players are optimistic about the team and the next season as, they, as more recruits and transfers will join the team in the fall as they look to compete for a Mid-South Conference Championship. Thanks, Octavian. We can't wait to see how the team will do in the fall. Next, we have a story on the snowfall that shut down campus by reporter Jackson Hussey. In 2015, the University of Pikeville recorded 14 inches of snowfall. This amount of snow ultimately led to water sanitation issues. Well, I've been here 15 years, and that's probably only the second time that we've had a bad snow here on campus. I would really like to thank uh, everybody who was involved with it, our uh, facilities maintenance crew. Uh, they did a, just an outstanding job of getting out and clearing paths and, and, and keeping the streets safe and clean. Um, uh, our, my officers here on, on duty, they did an outstanding job of uh, getting people the, the resources they needed to get. Thankfully, the University of Pikeville's campus police and facility management were there to help. We got to keep this campus clear. We use these mules to clear the roadways and the bigger walkways, but most of the small walkways we use shovels, um, a lot of salt to melt the ice. That storm kind of came without warning. You know, we wasn't expecting that much. And I think with the surprise of the storm, we actually did a pretty good job of getting everything clear. Although classes were canceled, some students did not get the day off. We talked to Cody Stennett about how the snow affected his life as a student athlete. I want to say that we, we shoveled snow off of our tarp for roughly three weeks, eight hour days for three weeks. No paycheck, think about that. We wanted to play baseball, that's all we ever want to do, so we did what we needed to to get our field ready. I'd really like to thank the students. Uh, they did, you know, we got up and had fun, had a good time without taking things too far, and I, I really appreciate that. They, they made our job easier so we could take care of them. Thanks, Jackson. We're going to now send it over to Caitlin Massey for the campus update. Here are just a few events happening on campus this week. On April 29th, What's Up Wednesday will begin with a free event called U Pike U Parodies. This is a video contest for campus organizations, clubs, and teams whose entries will raise money for a local nonprofit organization, Judy's Place for Kids. If students would like to participate, their group just needs to create their own short parody of a popular TV show or film and set it at U Pike. Students can send their links to Andrew Reed at upike.edu. U Pike will be celebrating Music in Our Schools Month with a faculty recital 
featuring guest performers. The recital will be held March 30th at 8.30 p.m. in Booth Auditorium. The University of Pikeville Coleman College of Business will be hosting its third startup challenge on May 9th, 2015. The event is open to all Eastern Kentucky residents. The deadline for business plan submissions is April 24th. For more information, you can contact the email startup at upike.edu. That's your campus update. I'm Caitlin Massey with Bear TV News. Thanks, Caitlin, for the information. Up next, we have a sports update from Eric Helvey. The University of Pikeville men's basketball team made it to the NAIA National Championship quarterfinals. There, they battled against the number two seed Talladega Tornadoes. The number seven seed U Pike Bears lost by only two points after a missed buzzer beater shot at the end of the game. Final score, Bears 62, Tornado 64. We would like to give a special congratulation to Kenny Manigault for becoming the NAIA Division I Men's Basketball Player of the Year, becoming the first player in the University of Pikeville's history to earn the honor. For women's basketball, number six seed, University of Pikeville was within four points of number three seed Langston. With under two minutes to play, unfortunately the Bears came up short in the end for 80-71 loss in the first round of the NAIA National Championship. This has been Eric Helvey with your U Pike Sports Update. All right, that wraps it up for this edition of Bear TV News. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. For my buddy Bradley Loader, I'm Trey Hutchinson. We'll see you next time.